Hey guys, it's Drew from Diving Sports, and today we're going to be talking about Scuba Pro's regulator lineup. So Scuba Pro is just one of the many brands that we carry. We plan on doing one of these videos for all of the brands. So if you plan on purchasing a regulator for yourself, you have lots of information to base your decision on. So we're going to work our way up in the lineup from the base, more kind of economical models all the way to the high performance regulators. Okay, so this is the Mark II Evo. Um, it's your entry level first stage. It's usually paired off with the R195 second stage. A lot of you might be familiar with this first stage um, or its predecessor, the Mark II Plus, because it was super popular as a rental regulator. It's an unbalanced piston first stage with pretty basic and straightforward hose mounting configurations. It's incredibly easy to maintain and get parts for. Parts are cheap, um, really easy to find, so you can get serviced almost anywhere. You can get this regulator in a DIN or a yoke configuration, and you can even get a nitrox conversion kit for it, meaning you can use it with up to 100% oxygen. It's really appealing for kind of entry-level technical divers who are kind of on a bit of more of a budget. The Mark II Evo is a smart little regulator with its coated spring and its new antifreeze sleeve on the piston, meaning it's really good for cold water. So the main cons to this first stage are of course the hose mounting options and it is unbalanced, meaning that throughout the dive it's going to affect how it breathes as you use up the gas supply in your tank. Moving up is the Mark 11 first stage. This is a fantastic little diaphragm regulator. It's balanced, so you will get nice consistent breathing all the way through your dive. It's one of the lightest diaphragm regulators I've seen. So when you pair it with something like the C370 second stage, it's amazing for travel. Um, it's gonna be a little bit more expensive than the Mark II, but unless you're really looking to save on some money um, or you have a specific use like a Pony or Deco bottle, you might wanna consider the Mark 11 because of its superior performance throughout the dive, compact design and cleaner hose routing options. The drawbacks of this regulator are that even though it is a diaphragm, it's not an environmentally sealed regulator, meaning that some of the moving parts are still in contact with water. It's also more expensive and complicated to service. Being a diaphragm regulator, so even compared to a similar performance piston, it will be more expensive to maintain. Next on our list is the Mark 21. I would almost call this a cousin to the Mark 11 in terms of what it's trying to do. While the Mark 11 is like a compact, sporty travel version of Mark 17, the Mark 21 is the compact version of the flagship Mark 25. You have a very similar design, um, just in a smaller package. Beautifully balanced. I think this one kind of looks like an engine, which is really nice. It performs amazingly well in almost all conditions. While it does lack options like the swivel turret, you are able to buy a separate cap for the bottom, which includes an extra low pressure port for more hose mounting options. This means you are still able to use it for side mount if you wanted to make the conversion um, and sacrifice a little bit of configurability. All in all, it's a very light and compact reg that does what the MK25 does, just at less of a cost. And when you use it with an S560 second stage, it makes an unbelievable regulator for the cost. I would say the main drawbacks are since they have shrunk everything down, the piston spring, basically the whole lower half, they haven't made it with the extra cold resistance as the Evo versions, so if you plan on doing some really cold water diving, I would go with something a little bit more beefy, maybe like the Mark 17 Evo. That brings us to the Mark 17 Evo first stage. A lot more experienced divers have probably seen this regulator grow up over the years from the Mark 14 to the 16, then the 18. The Mark 17 Evo has been Scuba Pro's ultimate cold water regulator, um, environmentally sealed, balanced first stage for a while. They included uh, the new coated spring. So even though it's sealed, it still has their latest antifreeze technology in there to keep your mind at ease. It's a fantastic regulator. It delivers air very similar to the top performing piston. So you won't notice a difference in breathing effort. Um, and it is absolutely bulletproof. When you take that and put it together with the new G260, it has been favored by technical divers and commercial divers for a good reason. You are able to get the whole thing oxygen cleaned and serviced up to 100%, making it great for really cold water decompression if you can spend the money. The downside is that this is a very heavy diaphragm regulator, meaning it is going to be expensive to maintain, uh, which is not the most ideal for travel, and it doesn't give you a lot of freedom for hose configuration. That being said, if you are doing a lot of demanding diving in less than perfect conditions, this is a beautiful first stage, and it will work and work until you are done. 
this brings me to the Mark 25 Evo, Scoop Pro's flagship first stage. This regulator has grown up in the same way that the Mark 17 did over the years. They have added and changed some features to turn it into one of the top performing regulators on the market. And yes, I am saying that as a recreational and technical dive instructor who has put thousands of dives on this first stage with the S600 second stage. It's a beautiful first stage, it's really smart design and great performance. It is noticeably larger than the other piston first stages on the list, so weight is going to be noticeable, but that does mean you're going to get a balanced, fantastic breathing, excellent cold water resistance, and amazing hose routing options due to the swivel on the low pressure turret, um, and a fifth low pressure port at the bottom. Just like all the first stages, you can get it in yoke or din, depending on your preference or style of diving you're gonna be doing. It has oxygen compatibility, so you can get a nitrox kit to use with up to 100% uh, for technical diving as well. The downsides to this regulator are the size and it's not environmentally sealed. So for proper ice diving or contaminated water diving, it might not be the best choice. Although with the Evo system and the extra surface area for heat exchange, it still performs amazingly well in cold water down to about two degrees Celsius. And last on our list is the newest baby in Scuba Pro's lineup, the Mark 19 Evo. This one right here. So if you wanted the Mark 17 for its sealed diaphragm, uh, but you also like the shape and options of the Mark 25, we now have the perfect middle ground. It has the almost the exact same shape as the Mark 25, but you can see here is the high pressure balance chamber instead of the piston. Um, but then at the bottom, you still have five low pressure ports um, with the bottom port. In terms of features, this is the regulator. Two high pressure ports, five low pressure ports, a swivel turret, and it's environmentally sealed. Obviously maintenance is gonna be um, a little bit more cost on the first stage because of its complexity, and it's going to be on the heavy side, so it's not the best for backpacking travel. That being said, with Scuba Pro's track record for making powerful workhorse regulators uh, and the amount of features included in this first stage, I'd be surprised if I had too many complaints after making it my primary regulator. So that does it for this video. We're gonna make this a two-part video, one for first stages and one for second stages. So if you like this and you wanna see more, um, subscribe for part two. Uh, hit the like button, comment if you have any suggestions of videos you wanna see in the future. We're gonna be making more scuba diving, free diving videos. Um, and yeah, we'll see you next time, thanks.